comic book movies have always played up to the fan service angle, offering something to audiences for the sheer benefit of putting a smile on their faces. These things don't necessarily impact the movie, they aren't always integral to the story, but they are often a cheap way of trying to win the audience around. Sometimes this works a lot better than others. And so with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with the 10 biggest fan service moments in comic book movies. Number 10. The classic theme in Spider-Man Homecoming is there any superhero across any comic book brand or property that can compete with Spider-Man for sheer popularity? The character's longevity and continued success with kids and adults alike suggest that there isn't. Even after both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield brought Peter Parker to life in five movies over 12 years, Spidey's introduction to the MCU left audiences with the kind of excitement few others could generate. He broke the internet when he appeared in the trailer for Civil War, and in 2017, finally headlined his own MCU movie. Anticipation for Spider-Man Homecoming was already through the roof, and audiences flocked to cinemas to see Tom Holland in action. There wasn't much director John Watts could have done to get fans any more pumped, but he managed it before the movie ever properly began. Instead of the typical Marvel fanfare, over the opening montage played an orchestral version of the classic Spider-Man theme song that would be recognised by anyone, anywhere. Did it improve the movie at all? Not really, but was there anyone watching who didn't get goosebumps from the score? Absolutely not. Number 9. The Joker in Zack Snyder's Justice League Batman's rogues gallery is as impressive as any other superhero in comic book history and can really only be rivaled by Spider-Man. However, in spite of names like the Riddler, Two-Face, Bane, and many more, the Joker will always be his greatest ever rival. As such, there was excitement and intrigue surrounding Jared Leto's turn as the Clown Prince of Crime in 2016's Suicide Squad. As we now know, the less said about it, the better. Leto barely had any screen time, and what he did have, he didn't exactly set the world alight, until Zack Snyder gave the character a second chance. In the Snyder cut after the Justice League defeated Stephen Wolf and Darkseid, there was a bizarre apocalyptic future dream sequence. Along with Cyborg, The Flash, Deathstroke, and Mira, Batman sought to take down Superman. There was one more member of this random team, namely, the Joker. This version was much darker, the aesthetic was immediately stronger, and even through incredibly jarring dialogue, he managed to convince many fans watching that he could have been something better if used properly. This scene ultimately led nowhere, and the movie wouldn't have suffered for the Joker's omission. He was literally just included for the fans. Number 8. Logan's Facial Hair in Logan for the most part, James Mangold's Logan managed to avoid the kind of fan service you might expect to see in a movie based around such a popular character, particularly one who was supposed to be giving his final performance, though at the time there was no way of knowing about Deadpool 3's plans. Instead of cheap callbacks and references, Wolverine's third solo movie was a powerful, character-driven piece that served as a truly epic send-off. That being said, even a movie such as this wasn't immune to bowing to fan service completely. If there was to be one critique of Wolverine as a character throughout the Fox movies, is that his appearance was never strictly common comic accurate. Hugh Jackman was too tall compared to his comic counterpart, and though it was teased, there was never the classic comic accurate X-Men suit. In Logan, however, Mangold threw fans a bone with the character's facial hair. While asleep at Eden, the kids decided to shave Logan's beard into the iconic look from the comics. This was, of course, something that infuriated Logan within the realms of the story, but put smiles on the faces of comic book fans in cinemas everywhere. Number 7. Wolverine's cameos in X-Men First Class and X-Men Apocalypse after the poorly received X-Men The Last Stand, Fox gave its superhero franchise a soft reboot. Turning to younger versions of Professor X and Magneto had the desired refreshing effect, and while the focus stayed on two of the central characters, it strayed from its best. The story of how Charles and Eric met and the inception of the X-Men was a phenomenal story, but had no place for Wolverine. However, the creators did manage to cram everyone's favourite mutant into the movie with one of the greatest Marvel cameos of all time. I mean, who doesn't love seeing Logan tell Charles and Eric to go f*** themselves? Fast forward five years and the X-Men franchise was a tired one and had more than outstayed its welcome. Apocalypse was supposed to compete with both Civil War and Dawn of Justice in 2016, but instead disappointed on every level, even the Wolverine cameo. While in first class, Hugh Jackman's appearance had been a joyous moment, seeing those famous claws in Apocalypse felt a little more transparent. There was literally no reason to bring him in other than fan service, and this wasn't just one scene, it was an entire sequence seemingly put together just to shoehorn him in. These are two very different ends of the spectrum of how well fan service can be received. Number 6. The A-Force in Avengers Endgame the Marvel Cinematic Universe has grown to be so extensive that there are superheroes inhabiting the franchise that have never crossed paths. However, plenty have been thrown together to face a common enemy, never on a bigger scale than Avengers Endgame. This was the conclusion of the Infinity Saga, and almost every live hero was on the battlefield. This allowed for team-ups and crossovers like never before. One such idea that the Russo brothers implemented was that of an MCU A-Force, namely taking every female hero and putting them into the same scene whether it made sense or not. The idea of the coming together on 
on paper was excellent, and had it been executed better could have been one of the greatest moments of the entire movie. Instead, bringing them all together seemingly just because was supposed to be a great bit of fan service, but instead came off more as pandering. It took far too long for the MCU to boast a female-led movie, and the complaints were loud and numerous. Unfortunately, instead of genuinely compelling stories with female characters at the forefront, this seemed like a quick fix that for most fans missed the mark. Hopefully the team can be brought together properly in the future. Number 5. A live-action Spider-Verse in Spider-Man No Way Home as we mentioned earlier, Spider-Man is arguably the most popular superhero of all time, even within the realms of the MCU. After the two previous iterations didn't exactly end as planned, Tom Holland's Warcrawler has enjoyed huge success under the Marvel Studios banner. Both Homecoming and Far From Home were critical and box office successes, and naturally the third in the trilogy was highly anticipated. However, nothing could have possibly beaten bringing both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield back into what was essentially a live-action Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse is one of the best Spider-Man movies ever, and No Way Home took that and brought it to life with all three live-action Spider-Men. This was the kind of thing comic book and mainstream movie fans dreamed of. It almost didn't matter what the story was when Toby and Andrew stepped through Ned's portals. Needless to say, the movie was a huge success because why wouldn't it be? It could have been underwhelming in literally every other department, but with the three Spider-Men on screen together at last, not too long after it seemed that even one appearing in the MCU was impossible. It was guaranteed success. If we're being totally honest, this entire premise was one big load of fan service. And it was. Worked. Number 4. The X-Men in Deadpool 2 Everyone knows Deadpool's shtick by now. Until Jennifer Walters burst onto the MCU scene, he was the only comic book character who could truly get away with breaking the fourth wall. And the Merc with the mouth certainly pushed these boundaries. He actively asked which version of Professor X Colossus was taking him to, whether it was McAvoy or Stewart, as the timelines were too confusing. He spoke to the audience whenever possible and made multiple jokes about why there were never any other X-Men on the screen. This last one, after in the first movie Deadpool suggested the studio wouldn't pay for any more characters to appear, enjoyed a huge payoff in the sequel. With Wade rolling around the mansion in Xavier's wheelchair, berating both Colossus and the studio for not giving the movie even one other member of the team, they all appeared in the background for a matter of two seconds. Professor X, Beast, Quicksilver, Nightcrawler, Storm, and Cyclops showed their faces in a scene that in the timeline made absolutely no sense, and realistically had no place there, but was one of the best cameos in comic book movie history. Number 3. Cap lifting Mjolnir in Avengers Endgame not only did Avengers Endgame bring together the Infinity Saga that stretched for the previous 22 movies, it was also the end of the road in the franchise for several major characters. One of the biggest, most important, and most popular characters in the history of the MCU is Captain America. There were some truly epic Cap moments in the movie, from standing as a one-man army against Thanos' entire forces, to finally uttering Avengers Assemble after so long. The latter could arguably have made it into this list on its own merit, but it just can't beat Steve Rogers proving himself worthy. As Thanos was kicking Thor all over the battlefield, about to pierce the God of Thunder's chest with Stormbreaker, Mjolnir began to move, cracking the Mad Titan on the jaw before zipping into Captain America's hand. The reaction of audiences across the world shows just how much this meant to fans of the franchise. Way back in Avengers Age of Ultron, Steve was able to make Mjolnir budge just a fraction of an inch, to the surprise of Thor. For the next four years, fans were convinced that he was worthy, and this moment proved it. It was a huge exclamation point on Cap's story, but it was as much for the fans as it was for the Star Spangled Man. Number 2. Superman's Black Suit in Zack Snyder's Justice League Let's kick off this entry with a statement any comic book movie fan knows all too well. Justice League, plain and simply, missed the mark. This was supposed to be DC's Avengers moment, but too many issues to go through here led to its ultimately disappointing failure. Four years later, the lobbying of Zack Snyder's fans paid off as the Snyder Cut was released in all of its four-hour-long glory. Inherently an improvement on the theatrical version, though still severely flawed, the movie was received far better by audiences. In short, Snyder gave the fans what they wanted. In one particular scene, this revolved around Superman's appearance after his resurrection. The black suit was rumoured and subsequently omitted from Joss Whedon's Justice League, but in the Snyder Cut it was there for fans to rejoice at. In the comics, Superman wore the black suit to maximise regenerating his powers after coming back to life, and it signified something of a new beginning for the character. In the movie, none of this was truly ever explored, and no explanation for the changing clothes was given. Instead, Clark Kent donned the black suit seemingly just to give those fans loyal to the director a kick. Number 1. John Krasinski as Reed Richards in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness 
In a conversation about fan service in comic book movies, there simply can't be any other place for Reed Richards' appearance in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness than at the very top. Kevin Feige himself admitted that this was done purely for the fans. The inclusion of the Illuminati and of Professor X was needlessly spoiled in the trailers for the Doctor Strange sequel, but the biggest reveal of them all was still kept quiet. After years of fan casting, John Krasinski finally brought to life Reed Richards, making MCU fans' dreams come true. This was easily the greatest moment in what was a disappointing movie, though actually seems 10 times better by comparison after seeing Thor Love and Thunder. It was, however, a fleeting glimpse of Krasinski in the role every single Marvel fan wanted to see him in, as he was killed after only a few minutes of screen time, with the rumours being that he won't portray the Earth-616 version of Richards in the upcoming Fantastic Four movie. Instead of Krasinski, Adam Driver's name is the latest to have been floated for the role, but no matter who brings Mr. Fantastic to life going forward, we'll always have those several minutes. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below, and while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also head over to Twitter and follow us there and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.